Issue 103. We start out in Jade Hill Zone with Sonic at a speech from a Zone Leader candidate, and he's bored and impatient waiting around for him to open a new bridge. Then the bridge turns out to not be safe as it breaks, and Sonic says, Guess I better save the bozo, and reluctantly goes to pull him out of the water, snarking about the builder's predicament. He shakes Sonic's hand, who says, The pleasure's all yours, pal, and asks if the Zone Leader's okay. The man Sonic rescued asks to repay Sonic for saving his life, while Sonic is reluctant to go with him. I wonder if there will be a twist where it turns out the bridge breaking was not the guy's fault. It seems too obvious for it to be his fault. His wife isn't happy that Sonic saved his life. Wow! What a bitch! But she smiles, and calls him brave anyways. The builder brags that he turned his house into a little palace by himself, and Sonic thinks, this is about as interesting as watching paint dry. The incompetent builder reveals that he rebuilt one of Eggman's old troopers to be his butler, and despite him reprogramming it earlier, somehow the robot still breaks a window trying to kill Sonic. Sonic spin dashes in, wastes time saying that another attack should do the trick, which telegraphs him being attacked himself, as the robot hits him in the head with a hammer on his arm, that you'd think the builder would have removed for a robot butler, who'd need both hands. Then the robot being convenience is telegraphed, by him trailing off in his text box. They really need to stop doing that. And he suddenly offers Sonic a cup of tea. The builder says that he modified one of his arms into a teapot when he repaired him, and the robot is confused about what to do. And again, for no reason, he self-destructs. The story ends with their house being destroyed, and Sonic giving the lesson to never do it yourself for engineering work. And now for the next story. I'd really like to see a story about Supersonic again, but instead it's about Captain Plunder. In Scourge Bay, the hideout of the pirates, the pirates start trying to recruit new team members. Plunder lies about an ancient map, and the potential pirate is smart enough to ask why the ink is still wet. Then it turns out Plunder got a reputation for being the biggest foul-up on the Seven Seas. How? Simpson jumps out of a barrel on the signal, wearing a ninja costume he summoned by magic, and kicks Plunder instead by accident. Before Plunder could try to kill Simpson for that, the Pirate Queen shows up and says that her daughters are going to join his crew. Why is she putting faith in him and stuff, when other people don't? They go to the roughest tavern in town, with Plunder asking what her daughters would be doing there. The story ends with those daughters causing trouble. You'd think that if she's the famous Pirate Queen, he would know what her daughters are like. In the next story, the Freedom Fighters scour the ruins of Citadel Robotnik, which Sonic had trashed. After Techno hopes to salvage some equipment for a workshop, her scanner picks up life signs, and Amy says it might be Short Fuse who had gone missing. Techno says the heartwarming line, I hope so, Amy. I miss that grumpy tin head. The life scans lead underground, and Johnny says that as a rabbit, burrowing is his specialty. And yet, this is the first and probably only time we'll see him use that special talent. If he could do that, then why didn't he drill through the Earth and catch robots by surprise? And why didn't he clear out space for their base for Techno's lab? Then Amy shushes them because she hears voices, which come from a cult that's the Dr. Robotnik Appreciation Tribe, which will be a villain team that we'll be seeing a lot of for the rest of the comic. It makes sense that this would be formed only because we've seen plenty of people who stupidly supported him going against Sonic. But still, it doesn't make much sense. And one of the cult followers even knows that Eggman's ugly, mean, and fearful, and admits that he brought them grim disaster. This is what I mean by it not making sense. How could he possibly want him back? Are they all brainwashed? The heroes impulsively rush in, and it turns out they've got ex-trooper blasters to try to deal with them. With Johnny reasoning that this place must have been the old armory. Amy says that they should go back up the steps because they stand a better chance outside. And she yelled at Short Fuse for rushing in without a plan. Good to see that the discount Sally Amy still sometimes is remembered who she really is. A female Sonic, which would mean she's impulsive. One of the cult followers named Brother Norman tries attacking them with an Eggmobile, only for him to discover why Eggman didn't use it. It plunges itself. Unfortunately, the rest of the Goon Order escaped in the confusion, and I bet they'll be lining up to join Eggman again later. In the next story, we see Sonic running along with Tails flying behind him, and one of the civilians gets Tails' hopes up by saying, And look who's with him! Only for the civilians to all forget about Tails' obvious name and mock him as he looks sad with shrunken eyes of fear, 
and one of them calls him the nice but boring one. The civilian who said that is reminded that his name is Tails, and he apologizes saying he meant no offense. With Sonic having not stood up for Tails at all when he clearly looks sad. Make me wonder how the two are still friends. Tails walks away with his head hung low, looking sad, and wishes he was as cool as Sonic, because then people would remember him. This this feels really off, like this is the kind of thing that shouldn't be continuing and should be stopped at all costs. It really looks like it's only a matter of time before he gets really disgruntled and sick of living in a shadow, which all would have been avoided if Sonic had been nicer to him and tried to stand up for him. I can imagine this Tails would have quite a rebellious teen phase. Though not to the point of turning evil, but probably to the point of becoming very passive-aggressive against Sonic. He's definitely got a lot of repressed resentment being built up to, but we're never going to see that because that would be good writing. Then Tails sees a poster for self-improvement lessons for boring people. Sonic calls Tails Pixel Brain and asks him if he's moving on to Green Field Zone or not. Tails shows how not close their so-called best friendship is because he doesn't even tell Sonic what he wants to do, probably being too ashamed because he knows that if he tells him he wants to take self-improvement lessons, it'll immediately lead to a snarky insult by him about how he needs it. <sighs> it's been a really long time since I've seen Sonic bully Tails. I was thinking that it was mostly exclusive to the, the early comic. It seems to be like... The, the worst times where he mistreats them are exclusive to specific issues where he almost seems out of character in the way that he's treating him. Like, we have this one, and the one where he just doesn't believe Tails about killing a bunch of badniks. But yeah, Sonic then runs past him and snarks, Ha! Probably flower pressing or something equally just as dull. How can he find a flying two-tailed fox dull? Uh, and I was hoping he had gotten over his pixel brain calling elementary school bully face with Tails, since he hadn't bullied him in a while. But unlike with Archie Sonic, being a bully is hardly just early installment weirdness for him, even though it easily could have been. Still, Sonic feels especially bully-like in this story, even for Fleetway Sonic. And again, it's not like I completely hate this kind of relationship, it's, it's interesting, it's refreshing. But something should come of this, aside from Tails just putting up with it. Tails pays the probably evil for the sake of conflict doctor a visit. He tells Tails to relax on the sofa and watch the energy lights as they revolve, and Tails naturally asks him how a sunbed would improve his confidence. I guess he only stayed because he's curious and desperate. I'm surprised that he was out and out honest that he's trying to hypnotize Tails. Tails then does some cartwheels, saying that he's a cool fox, as the doctor worries about somehow overdoing the hypnosis. Wouldn't he have a lot of experience with doing this? Was this literally his first patient? Tails flies away in a yellow blur at speed while saying the word groovy, trying too hard to be cool like Sonic, but I've never heard Sonic say the word groovy. And the doctor tells him to come back because he's acting too, as he puts it, out of character. That took me out of it. You shouldn't have characters say that in universe. Well, I figured this guy was evil, but an accidental villain is a nice double subversion twist. Then a civilian tells Sonic that an eccentric millionaire named Alf is flying the world's first round the zones balloon flight, and he's in trouble because the balloon is falling after he ate his cat. Then I briefly giggled because the guy in the balloon looks ashamed and says, I knew it was a mistake having a woodpecker for a co-pilot. And the woodpecker says, sorry, force of habit. Tails then shows up to Sonic while embarrassing himself trying to act like a rapper. I can't wait for the days when rappers aren't considered cool anymore. Sonic says, since when have you been cool? You're just a pixel brain. As Tails looks insecure with a forced smile, implying that it's Sonic's fault his confidence was so stunted that he needed to do this. Some civilians actually do call Tails cool, when all he did was act different and wear a stupid backwards cap. You'd think at this point they would just insult him as a tryhard. Sonic tells Tails to go rescue the person in trouble in the balloon, and Tails sits down being admired and says that he's having his tails brushed and doesn't want to ruffle his fur by flying around. I mean, it makes sense that he would be overcompensating for not getting any sort of respect by lapping up as much as he can now. Sonic says he's gotta get him back to his old self again, as he's acting more like Scourge than Tails. I guess I'm glad that this interesting plot gets artificially dragged out for another story. 
I was expecting that Tails would go back to his insecure self from Sonic giving him one of his usual harsh insults about never being cool. An insult I'd never expect anyone but Fleetway Sonic to say. The first story is by Lou Stringer, and it's a bit of a waste of time as Sonic has to deal with an incompetent builder named Roger Bodge, who made a robot trooper of Eggman into a butler, and did a shoddy job of reprogramming it. As it tries to kill Sonic with a hammer it shouldn't have anymore, and then self-destructs for no reason, destroying the house. It's a good thing Sonic has rings, or that hammer to the head would have killed him. Obviously, it's interesting that they have this Roger Bodge villain. Like, an incompetent accidental villain is very refreshing for the Sonic series. But, come on, like, this story didn't seem to be logically written. The second story, by Nitro Kitchen, reveals that Captain Plunder, despite looking like a badass, and being the main pirate that we saw the entire comic, Somehow he's considered the biggest screw-up ever and said the most menacing pirate around. And the Pirate Queen asked him to recruit her daughters as new pirates. That's nice of her to keep having faith in him, I thought she was one of his enemies. And the next story is by Lou as well, and is easily the most frustrating one of them all. It's about Tails getting himself hypnotized to have more confidence so that he can be cool after Sonic treats him like shit and so does everybody else. And for some reason, he's acting like a tryhard makes people admire him, instead of cringing at how he's embarrassing himself. This is forced. And his confidence for some reason leads to him not wanting to bother saving someone's life. Sonic's an egomaniac, and even he doesn't do that. So how does this make sense? How does this story make any sense? I'm glad we get to see more of the story instead of it ending right when Sonic insulted him, but I could really do without Tails trying to dress and act like a rapper. His role model is Sonic. You'd think he'd just act like him. But that would be simple.